is what you work so hard for. You have to see it through to the end. We are on board to help you do so. This is Fantasy Stardom Sidham, brought to you by Norton, denier of digital dangers everywhere. I'm Lauren Shahadi, alongside Jamie Eisenberg. Let's start with your start of the week. Yesterday, you told me in a certain situation, you sit Beanie Wells, but now he's your start of the week. So I need some clarification. Well, it's depending on who else you have on your roster because Beanie Wells probably wasn't starting for you for the most part all season long. But this week, you could get him into your starting lineup before we start. You smell lovely, by the way. Thank you very much, I Jamie. just wanted to tell you that. Appreciate it. Beanie Wells, looking at his matchup this week, you're talking about a guy that should be absolutely fantastic. We've seen him really step up over the last few games. Last week, he had a great game against Detroit, and I think that continues this week because the Rams, as we know, not a very good team in terms of run defense. So I like Beanie Wells. I think you could get him in your starting lineup. Again, it depends on the circumstances. But if you're looking for somebody as a sleeper this week, if you're looking for somebody as maybe a flex option or a number two running back, and in some cases a number one option, Go with Beanie Wells. I think you've seen him now really establish himself as the go-to running back in Arizona ahead of Tim Hightower, and Beanie Wells should have another great week. What about a guy he played against last week in Calvin Johnson? Will he be double teamed by San Francisco? Yeah, Calvin Johnson doesn't smell as good as you, but Calvin Johnson, you're talking about a guy this week that's probably going to struggle. Listen, they're a dome team. They're going outside to San Francisco. The 49ers' pass defense hasn't been great, but they did a good job a couple weeks ago against the Arizona Cardinals, and you're talking about a team that should be able to focus their attention on Calvin Johnson because no Kevin Smith, probably looking at another week of maybe Drew Stanton at quarterback, could be Dante Culpepper, probably not going to be Matthew Stafford, but you've seen Calvin Johnson. Don't look at the projections here because these are a little too high. Take away the touchdown. He hasn't scored now, I think, in two or at least three straight games. He's really struggling, dealing with a little bit of an injury situation on top of just poor quarterback play and a lack of talent around him. Now, you could always break a big pass, but if you've gotten to this point in the season, you've probably done it without Calvin Johnson. I actually have Calvin Johnson in a couple weeks. I'm going to sit him this week because I just don't like the matchup. All right, so no Calvin Johnson. Yes to Brett Favre. We, we remember what happened last year when he fell apart at the end with the Jets. That's not going to happen, you say, even though he's had a couple bad games. Yeah, a couple bad games, a couple of little arguments now with his coach, just getting a little heated for Brett Favre. But what cures those woes? Facing the Bears. I think when you talk about Brett Favre this week, listen, this could be his last Monday night game of his career. We still don't know what his plans are. For next year, they're obviously trying to make the playoffs and uh, or make a Super Bowl run. They're in the playoffs already, but they're trying to make their sure that they're ready and playing well when they get into the playoffs. And I think Favre will step up in this game. He played great against the Bears earlier this year with over 390 yards passing, uh, several touchdowns. And you're talking about a guy that should live up to expectations this week. I would trust Brett Favre. Let's keep in mind the Bears lost another key defensive player in Adewale Ogunle. You see Ben Roethlisberger and Alex Smith on this list. You can't bench Ben Roethlisberger after 500 yards passing. And you talk about Alex Smith. He's been sort of hit or miss over the last couple of weeks. Last week was a tough matchup against Philadelphia. He gets the Detroit Lions this week. He should do well. What a game for Big Ben against the Packers. He saved that game. Matt Hasselbeck doing the opposite of saving a game. More interceptions than touchdowns. A brutal game against Tampa Bay. Oh, it was awful. Now it's only going to get worse. He goes from one bay to the other. Tampa Bay to Green Bay. And I think you're looking at a quarterback in Matt Hasselbeck. Listen, he struggled at home last week against what should have been a favorable opponent. He can't trust him this week against the Packers. Green Bay has done such a good job in pass defense. Throw out what happened last week against the Steelers because that was a team fighting for their playoff lives in the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger playing at home, playing well. I think you'll see the Packers come back and do a good job. But remember, the Seahawks don't have Nate Burleson in this game. That's going to be a tough thing for Matt Hasselbeck to overcome, probably attributed to what happened to him last week. So you'll see Charles Woodson take away TJ Husmanzada. You'll see him coming up on the sit wide receiver list. And you see also Matt Ryan and Jay Cutler on this list as well. These guys have not got you to this point. Don't mm -hmm. turn to them in your time of need. If you're looking for some quarterbacks, obviously Alex Smith is one. Vince Young also should do well on Friday night or on Christmas night um, against the Chargers. And you're talking about some other guys, maybe like Eli Manning, Carson Palmer. Some questionable starting quarterbacks for a lot of people, but you could trust them this week based on the matchup. Can you trust Jason Snelling? We always hear you mention his name, but the big question mark is, will Michael Turner play or will they rest him? You said Snelling or Smelling? Snelling. Snelling, okay, just want to check. <laughs> uh, I think Jason Snelling should do absolutely fantastic if Michael Turner is out because you're talking about a scenario where Buffalo, the worst run defense in the NFL, and if Snelling gets the opportunity to get 20-plus carries, even 15-plus carries, he should live up to expectations as a starting option. Now, you have to pay attention to what happens to Michael Turner because if Turner plays, you can't play Snelling, you can't play Norwood. Stay away from the Falcons if all three guys are going to get touches. Michael Turner is not going to be a good fantasy option. So if he is out, which I hope he is, then you go with Jason Snelling. Brandon Jacobs, good game against the Carolina Panthers last year with three touchdowns, and he's got three touchdowns in his last uh, three home games. So I think you're looking at a guy that should play well, and we've talked about this all week long, Jerome 
comparison. Which one are we going to see from last week or the week before? Well, there's hopefully, quite a difference. hopefully we're going to see somewhere in between closer to what we saw last week. Listen, you can't pencil them in for 286 rushing yards. And three <laughs> Ever touchdowns. again. But maybe 100 right. yards and a touchdown against the Raiders, I think that's realistic. All right, what about Noshan Moreno? A great matchup last week. He didn't give you the numbers you expected. Can we expect more out of him? Well, last week was tough for him, and the week before that was tough for him. The last two games, he's only averaging 2.5 yards per carry. He may have hit the rookie wall. You know, we talk about this all the time. He's been getting a lot of carries. Five of his last six games, he's been above 18 carries. That's a lot for a young guy to handle. And he's facing an Eagles defense that's done a very good job in run defense. So I think you're looking at a, at a guy, if you can afford to bench him. Listen, he's been very good throughout, throughout the course of the season. I think he's got six games with at least 75 yards rushing. He's got six touchdowns on the season. Has done a very good job for that Denver Broncos offense. But I think this is a tough matchup for him. You see Quentin Ganther on this list. He struggled last week against the Giants, even though he scored a touchdown. And Matt Forte, you just can't trust them against the Vikings. All right. You know, sometimes I try and look on the website and look on the message board chat. So I have a question for you, a dedication for one of you. Uh, Santonio Holmes or Crabtree against the Lions? You know, I like Crabtree. I think he's going to do very well this week. But Santonio Holmes has been a Ravens killer. He scores. I think it's every time he's faced them, at least he's got a touchdown, I think, in his last five or six straight games against Baltimore. Looking to continue that this week. Again, we saw Ben Roethlisberger play an absolutely fantastic game last week. They're still desperate. They need to beat Baltimore if they're going to try and get back into the playoffs and defend their Super Bowl crown. you got to go with San Antonio Holmes this week. You can start Crabtree also. Listen, that's a good guy to throw in there. We probably should have had him on this list as well. But Sims Walker, I know he struggled on the road, but you're still looking at a Patriots secondary that's not very good. And also, Steve Smith facing the other Steve Smith. They go head-to-head -head this week. Without potentially Hakeem Nixon there for the Giants, he's dealing with a hamstring injury. That could be more targets for Steve Smith of the Giants. I also like Steve Smith of the Panthers. Do you like Darrell Revis? We know you like him. So what about <laughs> the guy he's going to be covering Reggie Wayne? Do you start him? This is an interesting topic for fantasy owners because Peyton Manning, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark, Joseph Adai, four of the best fantasy options all year long. Right. This is the reason why a lot of fantasy owners are in the position that they are, but they may start to rest, guys. This is the week where we may start to see it. So this is something you have to keep an eye on. Not only the fact that Reggie Wayne could be dealing a lot with Darrell Rivas, who again has shut down Roddy White, Terrell Owens twice, Steve Smith of the Panthers, Marcus Colston, Andre Johnson, Randy Moss, you name it, he's done a good job in shutting that receiver down, and I think this could be a tough game for Reggie Wayne. Listen, Peyton Manning's not going to shy away from throwing at Reggie Wayne, but it could be a scenario where the Colts just decide to maybe play a half, they could sit Reggie Wayne, you've got to be cautious, you've got to judge your lineup accordingly. If you can afford to sit some of these Colts players, I know it's tough, you may have to consider doing that again, not just Reggie Wayne, but you're also talking about Adai, Clark, and Peyton Manning. And then you see T.J. Usman's out that we talked about. Santana Moss, you just can't trust him at this point. There you go. All your preparation. We hope you do well this weekend. That is our goal for Jamie Eisenberg. I'm Happy Morris holidays Maddie. to you, by the way. Happy holidays to you and as well you and Fantasy Football today on Sunday. You can watch that 11 o'clock Eastern. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.